Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Susie and I love to share with you uh, my vintage booth and what I sell in it. And I love to upcycle items to sell in my resale booth and show you how to do that. So thank you for watching. And if you like this kind of content, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. I have another thrift flip video for y'all this week. I picked up two of these really pretty garden prints. I thought they were absolutely beautiful. Um, I like the wood frame on them, but it was in pretty rough shape, scratched up and whatnot. And I really wasn't that crazy about the dark cherry wood look. And I wanted to make them quite softer. So I am painting these frames with um, Dixie Belle drop cloth. Um, it's almost the same color as the little cottage inside there. See how pretty they are. There's two of them. The backs are in perfect condition. So I did two coats of the drop cloth and now I'm going to do a combination of wet distressing and a sanding block to achieve the distress look that I want on these. I really do want to bring back a good bit of that dark wood from underneath. And also, I am going to show you guys really quickly how I get paint off of glass. I forgot to film most of it, but I did get a little bit here, especially when it's wet. This is just how easy it is. You can see another big blob of paint on the side there. And I sealed these with some polycrylic, and that is a very, very easy thrift lips. Sorry for the lighting here. I just couldn't seem to get it right, and I needed to get these pictures taken. But I'm keeping these for myself, and I already have them hung in my bathroom. I'm trying to change it up a little bit in there, and these are so beautiful. I picked this up. I actually thought it was a wall pocket. It's got that faux rust look on the front of it, but I am hoping um, I'm going to use this cottage colors. It has a built-in stain blocker and sealer in it, so I'm hoping that it will not bleed through. Um, so I'm just going to try it without. Normally, I would shellac this first, do a spray shellac on it before I painted it. Um, I didn't do that. I want to see if this paint will stop the bleed through. And if it doesn't, we will deal with it then. So I'm painting the outside and the inside. And while I was painting the inside and the outside was drying, I could already see that there was going to be a pretty good bit of bleed through. So I did go ahead once this coat had dried and did another coat of a polycrylic sealer um, before doing the second coat and that worked just fine. So I am going to put the transfer painterly florals on this. Um, the great thing about this transfer pack is it's all do as you wish. You don't have to go there's not a pattern or anything. There's just a bunch of flowers that you can piece together however you want to. Um, there's sunflowers. There's lavender. And then these are these beautiful peonies. That is what I have always called them. Being a southerner, I have always heard them called peonies. I started watching YouTube videos of creators a couple of years ago, and I kept hearing people say peonies. I'm like, what is a peonies? And I realized that it was a peony. So I know that it'll be hard for you guys to tell me how you say it. Um, I guess you'll tell me, do you accent the oni part like I do, peon peony? Or do you accent the p part for peonies? Um, let me know in the comments how you say that. Either way, these are beautiful flowers and I love them over this haint blue color. 
This is the JB Ray Vintage Cottage Colors in the color Hate Blue. And I'm just piecing these however I want to. Um, if you've never used a transfer before, it is super easy. Um, you just use the tool that it comes with, remove the white backing, and rub until the image transfers onto your surface. It will get so much easier as you do it over time. Um, you just learn the feel of it. You can see when it releases. So I just filled this up with peonies and then I put some faux peonies in it and I did make a mistake. I did do a sealer on top of it and when I did that, it did get a little bit of a yellow tint bleed through, but y'all, I don't hate it. I actually like it a lot as long as it doesn't get any darker. Um, I still think it's absolutely beautiful. What do you guys think? Um, I picked this up for $3.99 actually today, the same day that I did this project. Um, someone had already tried to paint over what looks to be like tiles on this hanger. Um, I wanted to make it for a little boy's room. And what better molds to use than the Dewdrop Pond molds for this? I, you could use clay. Um, I decided to use resin and I decided since I had the time to go ahead and use my 24 hour resin um, to do this. So it's super simple. It's one part A, one part B and mixed together really well. I stirred these four together for about an hour. And with this resin that takes much longer to set up, you don't have to worry about pouring your molds nearly as fast as you do the 10 minute resin. That is great to use in a pinch when you're in a hurry, but I like using this. It's less expensive and it's really just as good. It just takes longer. So I initially just poured up the castings that I wanted to use for this little hanger. And I ended up having enough to pour up the whole mold. So anytime I mix up too much resin, I always um, go ahead and pour the rest of it up and save it for future uses. You'll never know when you'll need a casting or something. Um, you just wanna pour really slow and be sure to Use your little stick to get it in all the little small pieces of the tails and the antennas and such. So I let this sit overnight. I didn't quite do 24 hours, so it's still a little bit pliable. And I already pulled Mr. Lizard out. And I'm going to show you guys the rest of the ones we're going to use on this project. Look at all the detail that shows up. I love using the resin. Um, it just, the clay is good and it looks really distressed looking, but the resin is just absolutely pristine. So I am going to glue each of these little critters onto our little hanging shelf plaque with some tight bond quick and thick glue. Um, I just put a little bit on there and then rub it all over the whole casting with my finger, um, you could also use like a, a little detail brush. I've seen people do that so they don't get it all over their fingers. I'm a very messy crafter, so I'm always covered in paint and glue and anything like that. But um, it didn't take very long for these to set up. I went on and did a little something else while I waited. And then an hour or so later, I came back and they were stuck well enough for me to go ahead and paint them. I wanted to do a pretty masculine color, and this was the best one I have. It's a terra clay paint by Dixie Bell in the color London Blue. This is a very, very matte paint, um, but I absolutely love the color. It reminds me of denim, like a really dark denim, and it did take two coats, as you can see, once I get this first coat on, you can still see the tiles a little bit, but the second coat covered it completely. I had to kind of dab the brush around the castings carefully because they are still 
um, you know, the glue is still setting up. The molds itself are pretty hard at this point, but I also had to take a little detail brush to go around the edges. Um, those little tiles are like raised up. So I wanted to get that all around them and in the castings really good. So after two coats of this paint and letting it dry, I'm then going to come back and seal it all with some clear wax. And uh, look how pretty that blue is. Um, the wax, it does soak up the wax. Like I said, this is a very, very matte paint. So it takes a pretty good bit of wax, but we're just going to buff it in really good and we're going to let that dry for just a few minutes and then we're going to come back with some white wax and the reason i did the clear wax first is to be able to wipe more of the white wax back um, since this paint is so uh, matte and porous it is going to soak up the white wax as well too so i'm going to heavily start on the castings themselves and then just lightly do the rest of it and y'all, this really made it look like a acid wash denim. If you're a little older like me, you might remember those jeans. Um, so I went ahead and did the whole thing with the white wax. And then I'm just going to come back with a paper towel and wipe as much of that back as I can. And it stays in the details of those molds and those critters and just really makes them pop against that blue. And that's really all there is to this project. I put it in Mason's room for him to hang his uh, ball caps and such on or just anything he needs to hang up. And it is just so, so stinking cute. What better thing to hang in a little boy's room than snails and lizards and frogs and turtles? Okay, for our next project, I thrifted this old um, gas can, I guess it is, and I have seen people do the um, inlays with a clear coat, so I wanted to try it because I really didn't want to paint this gas can, um, so I'm just going to put a good thick coat of the clear coat down. And just like I would do any paint, and then I'm going to lay the inlay on it. This is one of the florals from the Melange paint inlay. There are so many different pieces that you can use in this inlay pack. If you're new to them, I highly suggest you get this one to get your feet wet with it because there's so many little small projects that you can do with this paint inlay. This is just one of the many, many florals in it, and it kind of looks like a peony, doesn't it? So I have got this all pressed down, and then I'm going to wet it, let it dry, and come back in an hour or so to remove it and we'll see how it did on this metal. I went ahead and sealed around the rest of the gas can just so it have the same color sheen throughout. Y'all don't forget you can get um, your IOD products on my website now, suzyonthefarm.com. I do have a couple of these melange available. So it's dry now and I've just wet it and now I'm going to pull it back. When I first pulled it back and saw the wording, I thought this is going to work out great. But then the rest of it just got lighter and lighter. And I don't know that it was really the paint inlay 
that went wrong is just didn't pop enough on this metal background. So then I decided that I would go ahead once it dried and paint a square big enough for the floral with some white paint. So I started doing that and then I decided that just didn't look good either. So I went ahead and painted the entire bottom of the gas can with two coats of this white chalk paint from Dixie Belle. And then we're going to use the very same inlay that we used before. I just laid it to the side and let it dry. So I'm gonna get a good, thick, but even coat of paint where I'm going to put the floral now. And then I'm going to do the same process that I did before. This is the same inlay that we use. So this is a second use here. We're gonna press it down into the wet paint really good. And this time I am going to come in with the brayer. Um, to me that just helps get it um, everything makes really good contact with it. Like I said, I don't think it was the clear coat that we used or the paint and later anything that went wrong. I just don't think that the colors popped enough with that um, galvanized tin behind it. So this is going to come out much better. Let it dry and we'll pull it back. And as you can see, the even though it's the second um, time to use this inlay there's still plenty of paint on it and the color really pops against this white I went ahead and distressed the rest of the can heavily, but was very careful not to get on the inlay because it will run or smear if you're not careful. And then I did a spray sealer over the entire thing. And y'all, even though this was not the plan that I had for this gas can, I love how it turned out. I love the white and the flower on it. So don't give up on your projects. Sometimes they're not gonna work like you envision, but the end result could be so much better than you envision. So I am all the time seeing these mail holders at the thrift store. I picked this one up for $2 and uh, we're gonna transform it. We're gonna use some more inlays and I'm gonna use this um, Rethunk Junk by Laura. Um, resin paint. I have never used an inlay with this resin paint. It has a built-in sealer. It's self-leveling. Um, it's very smooth painting. So I'm going to give the whole thing a couple of coats of this sunflower color. I used this in the last thrift flip video and everybody loved the yellow and I love it too. It's so bright for summer and spring and I am really loving in this color. I'm not going to paint the back. It's really clean and in really good shape and it's going to be against the wall anyway. So, but I am going to get down inside of the little pockets and all. Get it covered really well with two coats of this paint. These are all the little bees from the Melange paint inlay. Um, I want to use them, but I decided to cut the words off one here in the middle and use it on that very bottom part. That way there's, um, you know, one without words, one with some text, one without, one with, and then the bottom. So if y'all been watching my channel for a while, you know the process of the paint inlays, but I'm gonna show you again 
They're so easy, really, once you get used to them. I was so afraid of them at first, but once I started using them, I just love them. I love the transformation. Um, I just think it is so cool that it's actual paint that you're putting in there, and the images are so beautiful. So we put a good layer of paint on, and then we're going to press the inlay down into it, getting out as many wrinkles as possible, and then you re-wet your inlay, and then I take a cloth, like a damp cloth, and just dab all the excess water off. I've got these all done, and they're dry, and now we're going to see how it works with this resin paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and re-wet all my inlays, let them sit for just a minute before I start taking them off. And I will say one of the hardest parts about these inlays sometimes can be getting a hold of the corner to remove them, but um, just have to be really careful. You don't want to scratch your paint, um, but you want to get your corner and pull it off. And these worked perfect. Look how crisp that image is. I am taking a dry paper towel and just dabbing it um, to remove any of the excess water that is left on. Be sure you don't rub. You want to dab because these will smear. And I'm going to smear one here in a minute by rubbing instead of dabbing. So uh, listen to my advice, but don't do as I am showing you. Um, see, I had a hard time getting a good corner there, but I finally got one. These bees are so cute on this yellow paint. So here's the one where I messed up and I smeared it just a little bit. And you also have to be really careful and really light-handed when you seal these. Um, I am taking, this is a water-based sealer and some water. I've just mixed up in a little spray bottle and I... Um, start the sealer that way. That way when it sets it a little bit so it doesn't smear when I put on the sealer. And I decided to keep this little guy for myself too. Needed somewhere to hang some keys and put the mail in instead of just throwing it on the table. I love this color. It brightens up every room and it brightens up my mood every time I see it as well. Y'all almost thought you were going to get away with a video without my little nacho buddy. But here he is. Um, we're going to be painting this little table. And he was tired, so he had to lay there while I painted. I got this table at a yard sale last week for $15. I love the shape of it. Um, I didn't like the color, so I painted it with two coats of a Waverly ink chalk paint, and then I sealed it with a polycrylic sealer, and it looked horrible. There were brush strokes all in it. Some places were shiny. Some were dull. I just did not like it at all. So I was uh, basically to the point where I'm going to sand this down and start over. I took it outside and I sanded it down really smooth. There was a scratch in it that I didn't even notice until I got the paint. So I sanded that scratch out. I distressed all the legs and everything really well. And then I cleaned it up and I'm like, well, hey, this looks pretty good now. I really like this distressing and the paint's more even and everything looks much better. I have had this Lemon Drops transfer forever and I've never used it. And it is actually discontinued now. Um, and it is so beautiful, but we can't get any more. So if you want to do something with these lemons, I think I have two left on my website. Or find you a stockist that still have some because we can't get them anymore. Once they're sold, they're gone and they're so beautiful. So I'm going, you can just put this on um, like it is on the page, but I'm going to cut it up and position these more where I can get kind of more out of them. This one does only have four pages, um, but I thought that it would be plenty for this table for the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to put these lemons on 
um, where they're all kind of going the same direction. I'll use uh, two pages plus one or two lemons on top and then the rest of them on the bottom till I get all the lemons placed how I want them. Um, you just, just like any other transfer, rub and lift until it all transfers onto your project. And y'all look how gorgeous these lemons look on this black. I loved it on the page and I love it on this table. I'm now going to seal it with a clear wax. I'm gonna seal it all over and buff it in really good and then wipe it back with a lint-free cloth. And for the top, I am going to do two coats of this wax just to give it a little bit of extra protection because it is a tabletop and people might be sitting drinks and stuff on it. Normally, I would seal my transfers on a table with some kind of clear sealer, but the wax is also pretty durable, especially if you do more than one coat. And I am in love with this lemon table. Um, the black against that yellow is just so gorgeous. And the distressing turned out just perfect where you could see some of that dark wood also. I know that someone is going to snatch this up right away. And these size tables are definitely one of my best sellers. They always sell for, you know, $60, $75. So I hope that y'all have enjoyed this week's Thrift Flip videos. I know that they were kind of all over the place and tons of different colors but i had in my mind what i wanted so many of these to be and they just um came out just like i wanted them thank you guys so much for watching let me know in the comments which was your favorite and i'll see you again next week